So I'm just going to run through um, some of the basics of InDesign. Uh, if you're a beginner, then this is a good place to sort of uh, understand some InDesign fundamentals. And, you know, if you're a seasoned veteran, then maybe just a refresher course. But uh, yeah, we're just going to run through some of the, the earlier concepts, I guess, of um, using the program and what you can do with it. Uh, and yeah, hopefully you get something out of it. Let's go. So obviously when you open InDesign, this is what you've got. Um, hit create new. I usually click web just in case, but you know, we're not doing anything for print. So it's web. Um, this should change the pixels. And it's a case of 1,500 and then it was 500 in height. Make sure you got landing uh, landscape on uh, one page. If you've got facing pages on, I would turn that off. That's more for if you're doing spreads for print. Um, and then, yeah, that's the rest of the settings, which I'm pretty sure are, are the default ones. If you're new to InDesign, uh, this might not be the screen that you have. So all the workspace. So I always use Essentials Classic because personally there's too much missing from the normal um, new default Essentials. So I go to Essentials Classic and then I set this up um, depending how big my screen is. It, you know, all of these different things vary. And I, because I use this program so much, I, this isn't overwhelming to me. And actually, if I could fit more toolbars in, then, then I would. But um, for, the, for the time being, we'll run through some of these uh, as and when they come up. So, um, yeah, InDesign, right? So we're going to be doing this pretty much the exact same thing. So uh, let me just do a square, which is over here, rectangle tool. We do this. And we can up here just change the angle. Uh, I'm always going for 22 degrees. Don't know why it's just always 22 degrees half the time. So there we go. There's a rectangle for the time being. We can adjust that how you want. And if I press Alt, I can while I'm clicked on the rectangle, I can actually duplicate it. Duplicate it. Ooh. One, two, three, four, five. So again, I can highlight both of them, saves me some time. And now I've got four and then just kind of zoom in to line them up and then alt again and off of here. So at the moment, this view is showing me the, what's called the pasteboard. And that is everything, you know, you can do whatever you want on the side. You're not going to see it because when you press W, this is what is, you know, what the actual graphic will look like when it comes out. So at the moment we've got um, overhanging sections. This one isn't even on there at the moment, which flicking between W, pressing the W button, sorry, will sort of demonstrates that. Highlight all of them. I'm gonna press Command G or Control G, G if you're on a Windows computer. And in holding um, Command and Shift, I can now just you know, maneuver this as, as much as I want to. Um, you can also manually do it by going to right clicking and going to scale, but this is a lot, it's not as seamless, I guess, because you have to manually put this in and guess um, what the size is. I just find that command shift or control shift is, is much, much easier. Um, so putting that in here and I'm just gonna not command shift this time. I'm just gonna jam everything into here and let's do something similar in fact i'm making a bit of a meal out of this now right almost there so there we go now we can see that everything is within where we want to go so going to ungroup everything you can right click ungroup or as you can see shift command or shift control g bang right so we've got the shapes I think it's probably easier to highlight everything and get rid of the outline because we don't need it. We don't want an outline around everything. Unless you want to, then ignore this step. You can press none on swatches. InDesign rewards sort of patience, I would say. Um, it's gonna take you maybe slightly longer to set up um, a document or a template, but it saves you time later on down the line because you'll now just be able to drop things in. 
So these shapes that we've just been um, moving around and manipulating are actually frames that we're going to drop our assets or our graphics into. Um, so I've got them all here on the desktop at the moment. And these are the actual PSDs of the um, graphics. Now, you can link them. You could make copies of them um, and then link it in. Um, or you can use the originals. Um, these are copies of originals, but for this, we'll call them the originals. And you can quite literally drag this in. Um, if you click it once, you're moving the frame. If you double click it, you're moving whatever is in the frame. Now at the moment, this is skewed to 22 degrees. So if I click it once and start doing it, the frame moves. And if I double click in it and now do it, it's whatever is in the frame is gonna start moving and, and be changed. And that you can tell that what one you're clicked on because if it's a blue frame around the frame itself, um, that's the frame. As soon as it goes brown and obviously the, the shape is different um, that's whatever is contained within it so i'm just gonna hold shift and scale this down and move it into how i want so something like this so it's just a case of dragging these in so these could be located anywhere i've just put them on desktop to sort of save myself some pain while making this but um you know you could have these in and keep them within the folder that you have them saved in um, and just link it directly to InDesign because InDesign, if I go on here, do reveal in Finder is going to point me straight back to this, which is on my desktop. Um, so it's just a case of putting these images in, as I said, um, double clicking on it, pressing zero. And you can actually do right click fitting and you can do uh, fit content to frame and that will reduce it because sometimes obviously you will have like a huge image and that can be a bit um, kind of hard to work with. Uh, so I'm just going to, because I can tell it slightly moved it for some reason. So again, you're looking for the sheer X angle. Um, don't get it muddled up with rotation because obviously rotation is just going to keep turning it around. And if you want to reset it to its original position and you just press zero and yeah, easy. Um, so I'm just going to drop these all in. So that's all of those. Um, so these are all my links that we can see in there now. You can go to layers if you want. There's nothing crazy going on here. And this is the difference, again, between um, Photoshop and InDesign. Layers doesn't really come into it. Um, it, well, it does, but in an instance like this, you know, you're not really going to have to, you don't have lots and lots of objects on this page. So you can um, just click on what you need, what you want to move and move it. You don't need to kind of find the layer, have auto select on. It is just straight up click and click and shoot really. Something else that's quite cool um, with InDesign is that you can use it as a non-destructive way of sort of testing out um, different ideas or different um concepts i guess so hypothetically we've we're, we've done this version we'll call this version one you can press create new page and you've got a new sort of artboard if uh, you're familiar with that in photoshop um so you could delete this if you right click it you can press duplicate the spread and now you've got two of the same thing and now it's a case of you know potentially i really want to i don't know I want to have them offset somehow. I can do that. It's not really working. I don't think that works. You can either delete it, do whatever you want with it, but you've still got the original that's untouched and um, kind of allows you to sort of go through a progression of, of different ideas, um, which in the past, even now, it's still something I do. Um, you know, you can just check if something works or not and not destroy everything. And if you're looking to go professional, if you're going to be working in a team, uh, non-destructive editing is so important because, you know, the amount of people um, and input that there is, you don't know if someone's going to really like concept number three, change their mind, go back to concept number one. 
and then actually go back to concept number three and you've deleted it or you've lost the edit and you have to do it all over again. So we've got all this, everything is hunky-dory. We wanna go for, if you remember, there is a black overlay over it. So we're gonna go and rectangle tool and just drag it over it. Because again, doesn't matter if there's overhang, doesn't matter if things are flying all over the place because all you can see is this square. Um, currently there's a black line around it, but it's got no fill. So I can either go here and give it a black fill or I can press this teeny tiny little arrow and switch it round and now there's no outline and now there is a black fill. It's just a case of cranking the opacity the same way that we did on uh, Photoshop, only this is in an effects panel now. And this is exactly the same as Photoshop, operates the same way. Um, it's just a case of finding the opacity. But if you go into Window and Effects, that will come up if you can't see it. So again, we'll pop that in here. A case of this is a this is my logo, but it's an Illustrator file, and again, you know, similar to Photoshop, you can drag that straight in. It's huge, so I'm going to Command Shift and drag it from the corner, and now I've got this. Um, and then you can align the centers again the same way uh, that you do in Photoshop. So model page. And there we go. Um, and just in case you wanted to add a website or something, you've got the text tool here. And text on InDesign is much better than on Photoshop. Uh, so we'll zoom in and we'll go www.jankpauldesign.com. You can zoom it in if you can't see it. Go back to this black arrow or press space. We've got it in here in this in this box. Now this box is the frame for the text itself. So you can go, uh, if you want to change the color of it, you press the T for it and that affects the text. So you can see that it's, it's black. Um, this is the center, these are just the alignments. Uh, and I don't want this frame being so big. So I can go to right click, fit frame to content. Um, yeah, so if you want to change the frame, you can do Command, Alt, and C. And we've reduced that down. Now, the only issue is if I start typing, there's it's going to overflow the uh, box. And you get this little red line here. And if you don't notice that you've, un if you've done this, by the way, uh, when you come to export the document, it will give you a warning that there's overflow in the text. Um, so it's a case of dragging it out if you want to doing that shortcut again which is command alt c and it will show you everything and then you know you can delete it and then fit the fit the frame again um and then it's a case of lining it up um i have no idea where i want to put this so let's say on the margin i want it all the way to the right and all the way at the bottom there we go um so that that is literally the header now, if you want to understand why I recommend doing something like this in a template, something that hypothetically you're going to be changing monthly or fairly often, more than once, what you can do is if you've gone layer, I can lock it again, same way in Photoshop, and now everything is movable. We can lock that and we can lock the website as well. Okay, so hypothetically now, I like the Brady one, but oh man, I got the text on it and that's kind of conflicting and uh, click on links and you can do edit with Photoshop. Um, so on here, I can actually do whatever I want to all of these um, different layers. We'll turn the Tom Brady text off and maybe we'll even turn off the, yeah. If I hit save, minimize it, it's updated on InDesign as well. And what it also means is that if you want to go through any of these, and I would obviously suggest that you make copies rather than do it to the original, you can go through and you know make changes and see them happen on, on your document. And yeah, if you want to go in and, and start adding different ones in, it's a case of dragging it in. And the magic of it really happens when we'll save it as a as a test file. Twitter header. 
if you go to file and then package, really important, if we hit package, uh, you may need to, you know, if you want to copy the fonts, I mean, a lot of this is if you were sending to a printer, so it's kind of not really relevant, but make sure that you have copy linked graphics and update graphic links in package. I tend to take the word folder off the end of it, but this will be called the same thing. And then hit package and InDesign will generate for you a folder with the InDesign file in, a folder called links, and it will copy all of these PSDs and all the assets um, into its own folder and link itself to those. So if I close this down now, open this and open the newly packaged file, all of these won't point to the desktop anymore. So this is a good way of just organizing your files and, and keeping on top of everything. So if I, yeah, look on and search for the folder, it's now not on desktop, it's in the Twitter header file. And as I said, it, it just means you can keep on top of things if you've got lots of different assets going on in here. It's a way of, of keeping up to date. What I would suggest is if you were going to also, you know, pretend that this is a different um, logo that I'm going to put in there and we'll call it something else. I would suggest copying it into this new links folder and then copying it into the into the new document because otherwise you're going to have to constantly relink everything. Um, if it's on the desktop and you delete it from there or something, it's going to be searching for it and it won't be able to find it because if I move that to the bin now, it immediately is asking where it is and wants me to tell it where that file is. If I undo that, it goes away and it knows where it is. So it's, it's just a more um, thought out, more structured way of doing things. Um, and when it comes to actually saving your file, because you obviously want to use it, I'll export it into that folder and you've got your you know usual choices here PNG JPEG we'll use PNG for the time being I guess um, Twitter header press save and you know if you've got multiple you know if we'd gone down that route of doing lots of different concepts and you only want to use one of those pages then choose that page have it on pages you can choose how high the quality it is. Obviously, bear in mind that the higher the quality, the bigger the file size. If you're doing something for websites and stuff like that, it might take a while to load. Twitter, it should be fine. Uh, resolution, PPI, 72, because this is, this is for screen. Um, you only want to kind of go into the realms of higher up, you know, 300 plus if you're doing something for print. 72 here is fine because it's going to be compression on Twitter's website anyway. Uh, anti-alias and that's pretty much all I ever really go through so yeah I mean hopefully you've found that uh, interesting useful and yeah I'm really excited to see your new Twitter headers <laughs> catch you at the next one